Yeah, today I'd like to show you or inspire you how you can set up a, a clean architecture inspired React application. Before we start, some words about me. Hello everyone, I'm Mark. I've been working as a software engineer since 2013 and I'm with Space Teams here in Hamburg. At Space Teams, we are technology agnostics, which doesn't mean that we don't have any favorite technologies we'd like to work with, but we don't set ourselves any boundaries. And to always stay ahead of the game and dive into new technologies, um, we have a dedicated day in, in the week where we have our so-called space time to do exactly this. Um, yeah, you can find me on LinkedIn, Sing, and also on GitHub. And that's right, it's Discord. So, Okay, let's talk about setting up an application. What you would normally do is using a tool like Vite, for example, or back in the day, create React app to do so and you'll end up with something like this. So a pretty basic project here where we just have um, our app component. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And now you can go ahead and start developing your application. But if you don't follow an architectural pattern, you might end up having some issues. Like for example, code duplications. When you think about two components and in each component you need to handle some data fetching, for example, you might end up having duplicates there. Also, tight coupling can be an issue. And just by looking at this picture, it's pretty scary when you think about, for example, scaling your application later on. Also, testing can get complex. When you think about a component that handles data fetching and rendering UI stuff, you have to take care of both while testing, instead of, for example, just focusing on the data fetching logic. And you can face some inconsistencies. For example, one of your developers might use Redux for state management, and another one might, for example, use React state. So we have inconsistencies there. Also, if you remember the image we saw for tight coupling, mig migrations can get really tricky and hard and take time. And Overall, you're facing reduced maintainability. So it takes a long of time, it takes a lot of time and is very error prone, and this can be an issue. And overall, you're facing a lack of flexibility with your application. To avoid something like this, you can use an architectural pattern, like clean architecture, for example. You can see this diagram here. It consists of four layers, as you can see, and let's take a look at each layer. Right in the center, we have our entities. These are our enterprise business rules, and uh, yeah, this layer represents our domain objects. And it contains only business rules and business data, and it is totally separated from the rest of the application. Then we have our use cases, this red circle there. These are our application business rules. And this layer represents our business actions, and we have pure business logic there. Now the next layer, the green one, is called interface adapters. And this layer is responsible for converting data from your data layer to the use cases layer, entities layer, and vice versa. And it's also responsible for implementing um, the interfaces that are defined by the use cases. And also triggers the use cases. Overall, you would put your presenters use controllers in this layer. And then the most other one, the blue one, it's called Frameworks and Drivers, and this is basically just some glue code to hook up the various layers of this architecture. And it's mainly composed of frameworks and tools, like for example, a web framework or database. And in this layer, we also isolate all the details, like for example, our infrastructure. Um, so it can do a little harm to the rest of the application when we, for example, like to switch out things or replace things better. And yeah, this makes it also easy to replace. Now, as you may have noticed, we have these arrows here pointing from the outside to the inside, and this is because the flow of control uh, in this architecture is from the outside to the inside. This means our 
high-level components know nothing about our lower-level components. For example, our entities know nothing about our use cases. Now, you may, uh, may ask yourself, what if a use case needs to call a presenter, for example? We can't do this here um, directly because the flow is from the outside to the inside, right? So instead of calling the presenter directly, our use case would call an interface for this. And the interface implementation is provided by the interface adapter layer. And this is called the dependency inversion principle. Now, as I mentioned, um, the high-level components know nothing about the lower-level components. You can see this here in the screen architecture cone. You see our entities right in the center. This is the most abstract or general layer, and we will this will rarely change. And the more you move outward, the more concrete or specific things get, and the more frequently they will change. Now, how does an architectural pattern like this helps us to avoid these issues? Um, well, clean architecture promotes a clear separation of concerns. And as you saw, we have clear boundaries between our different layers. And this uh, helps us to avoid tight coupling because we can decouple components and modules by using interfaces and dependency injection. Also, it, um, clean architecture emphasizes uh, modularity and encoding organization. So we can, for example, develop new features within a specific layer or module. So we can avoid scalability challenges. And also, we can test our components independent and in isolation, so we don't face that testing complexity. Also, uh, this pattern emphasizes the creation of reusable components and services, which helps us to avoid code duplications. And it also emphasizes consistent patterns and design principles throughout the whole application, so we don't see any inconsistencies. And speaking about migrations here, um, this modularity of this architecture allows us to encapsulate the data access, for example, uh, or other external dependencies. And this means if we'd like to replace a component, for example, we can focus on updating a specific layer or interface and thus minimizing the impact on the rest of the application. Um, when it comes to reduced maintainability, this clear separation of concerns and this modular design, that yeah, it makes maintenance easier for us. So we can update our code or, for example, fix a bug within a specific layer without affecting the rest of the application. And speaking of, lack of flexibility, clean architecture encourages loose coupling and abstraction. And yeah, this makes replacing components, for example, easier or even switching to new technologies if needed. Yeah, let's set up a clean architecture inspired app. And to do so, we're using the MVVM pattern. Now, the MVVM pattern is part of the MV patterns. You all know the MVZ pattern. It's around since the like, 1970s. The MVVM pattern was introduced in 2005 by Microsoft. But the overall goal of all these MV patterns is a clear separation of concerns, good maintainability, reusability, and testability. The MVVM pattern looks like this. So we have a model here, a view, and a view model. The model represents our app's data and business logic, the view, displays the data from the view model in our UI and is also responsible for taking the user input. You can see the input gets into the view here and will be passed to the view model. And the view model, I'll use VM for this later on in the slides, the view model exposes the data from the model to the view and handles the user interaction and processes them into actions on the model. Now, why, we do, uh, why do we use MVVM for creating this clean architecture inspired application? Because MVVM enforces a separation or clear separation between our UI, which is the view, the presentation logic, which is the view model, and the underlying data, the model. The view model also acts as layer that abstracts the view from the model. So the view model keeps the UI concerns separate from our business logic. So we have layers of abstraction there. And also the view model can be tested in isolation without needing the actual UI components. So this comes in handy when it, come to, when it comes to testability and isolation. Now, the business logic, um, later on when we set up our React application next to the view model, which centralizes our presentation logic and business rules, we also have distinct components for our use cases. And the view model then can coordinate the use case execution as needed. And yeah, this helps us to maintain a separation of concerns and modularity. The data flow in our application 
Well, the view model prepares and updates the data for the view. And this also aligns with the principles of clean architecture by maintaining this controlled flow, in our case, the flow of data from the view model to the view. And we're also using dependency injection. So our view model, for example, can receive services or repositories, or in our case, use cases, via dependency injection. And this enables our view model to interact with these external data sources, for example, or the use case, without being tightly coupled to them. And this helps, uh, helps us to achieve uh, the dependency inversion principle in the context of clean architecture. Now let's set up our application. And yeah, we are creating a to-do app for this. That's right, yet another to-do app. <laughs> so yeah, the features of our application, uh, we have a list of to-dos. We can create a to-do, update an existing to-do, or delete a to-do. You see the UI here. We have some wireframes here. As you can see, uh, one page here has the list of to-dos and this plus button. If the user clicks on this button, they will be forwarded to the add to-do view right in the center here. And there we, uh, the, the user can enter a title, a description, and by pressing on the create button, create a to-do. And the user can also directly click on a list item here on a to-do and will be forwarded to the to-do details view on the right. Where we see the title, the description, we can delete it to do, edit it to do, and yeah. A user can also directly click on this trash icon here in our list to remove the to do. Now, because we're setting up a clean architecture inspired application, what or which part of this app belongs to what layer of clean architecture? Our entities in our case, our domain objects, our business objects are the to dos, so we put it in the center here. We have different use cases like get to dos to get a list of all to dos, get to do to get a specific to do, create to do, update to do, and delete to do. These are our use cases. Then the interface adapter layer, there we have our presenters. In our case, that's a to do list view and view model, create to do view and view model, and the to do details view and view model, and also our to do repository. And on the last layer, the frameworks and drivers, we have our to-do data source. Yeah, the application flow looks like this. So for example, you see the to-do details view on the right uses the to-do details view model, which in turn uses three of our use cases, the get to-do use case to get a specific to-do, update to-do use case, and delete to-do use case. And all our use cases are using the to-do repository, which finally uses our to-do data source. Now, as you can see, our folder structure looks like this. It's inspired by clean architecture. You see right at the top there is an adapter folder, which contains our repository. We have a data folder with our data source, in this case, local storage. And this DI folder that isn't open here will contain our dependency injection container we're using. I'll show you that in a minute. And then we have a folder domain, which contains our to-do model, the to-do repository interface, and our use cases. And finally, we see the presenter folder here, which contains our pages, for example, the to-do list view and view model, and this component subfolder here, which is um, structured uh, by following the uh, atomic design principle. So we have atoms here, which are the smallest parts of our application, like a button. And then we have molecules, for example, a bit more complex, consists of multiple atoms. And this can be our list, for example. Now, the view looks like this. It's pretty simple. We have a header here. We have a list component that gets a list of all to-dos. And then we have this plus button here. We are also using a navigate method from our router. And if a user, for example, clicks on the plus button, they will be forwarded to the create view. Also, if a user clicks on the to-do item in our list, they will be forwarded to the details view. And the user can also click on the trash icon, and then we're calling this delete item method here. And the to dos and the delete item method will both be provided by our list view model, which we resolve via dependency injection here. Now, as I mentioned, we're using a um, dependency injection container here. For this, I've used in this example a library. I think it's called Arbilix. I'm not sure how to pronounce it correctly. But, anyways, you can create your container, and as you see, register all the stuff you need, like our repository, our data source, our view models, and our use cases. Then, finally, in the view model, 
we are injecting dependencies right in the function header here. You can see this. We have the get to do use case and the delete to do use case. And when our components get uh, gets mounted, this use effect hook down here gets called, where we call this get to do uh, get to do method, which simply executes our get to do's use case to fetch a list of all to dos and yeah set them um, or save them in a local state. Then before returning the to dos, we are using a little helper method here just to sort the to dos by IDs, and we're also returning this delete to do method here which executes the delete to do use case if we'd like to delete it to do. Now our use cases are pretty simple. As you can see in both cases, we're injecting the repository and the function header again, and both of them return an execute uh, method. Um, yeah, and these are simply calling for the corresponding methods on the repository. For example, this get here to get a list of all to do's. Now the repository looks like this. We are injecting the to-do data source here as dependency and returning a bunch of methods to update it to do, get all to do is created to do, and so on. And all these methods are calling corresponding methods on the to-do data source, which looks like this. So this is not the whole file, just two functions, but you're, you're getting the idea. So in this case, the get all method, for example, is yeah, receiving the list of all to do's from local storage in our case and passes it to a yeah, array of to-dos and returns it simply. And the delete one method here filters out the specific to-do and updates stuff in our local storage. Yeah, and like this, you can set up a clean architecture-inspired React application by using the MVVM pattern.